Hello everybody, it's Griffin here again. We're going to be playing some more Jund. Um, no changes since the last time we played. Um, I'm probably going to upload both of these videos at the same time, so in the previous video that's actually further along on your wherever you're watching this. Um, so no changes since then. Um, we have swapped in an Abrupt Decay. We have swapped in a single Dark Confidant. To, and uh, cut a scavenging ooze. Um, and in the sideboard, we have gone down on Bayloths and up on things like Kitchen Finks, Huntmaster. Um, today is the first day that M19 is legal. And so Alpine Moon is a really interesting one, but I think I still like Damping Sphere. Um, a little better because I'm a little concerned about Quark Clan Ironworks combo. Um, and another card that I'm interested in is, you know what? I'm going to look it up. I forget what it's called. Aha! I found it. It's called Runic Armasaur. This is a interesting card that I'm really... Um, I kind of, right now we've got um, Tireless Tracker in this kind of three mana um, value slot. Three mana creature, like value creature slot. Um, I like the stats on this thing. Two, five. Five is a lot. That can block a hollow one. Yeah. And it can lots of times block a Tarmogoyf. Um, block a Tassiger. So, th that that's a really good stat line. As a tractor drives by. Um, so this is a card that I'm interested in playing. Um, but I'm not sure quite yet. Uh, we're going to stick with the old Tireless Tracker plan right now. The Tireless Tracker is better in um, a metagame where you want to be more aggressive. I've been kind of switching back and forth between Corsair of Crufix and Tireless Tracker. And I'm back on t Tireless Tracker right now. Um, there's a lot of... Just a lot of, like, combo decks and um, decks where you'd rather be aggressive than defensive. Um, I think against, like, something like Humans, Burn, if that's the metagame, maybe even Affinity, then I'd rather be running Corsair. But I like Tracker a lot. And, I don't know, we'll give this Armasaur guy a try pretty soon. Anyway, we're going to jump into a league and see how this goes. Alright, we found an opponent in Stage 1. You can check out how only three people have trophies. So we might be one of the only people with trophies if we 5-0 this. Let's see. Pretty reasonable hand. I think this is fine. Ooh, a mirror. Gonna start off with Inquisition. Not a mirror. Blighted Agent, Mutagenic Growth. Ooh, boy. Gonna really wish we had uh, an instant speed removal spell here for Ink Moth Nexus. Let's see. Our options are going to be, like, is it right to just let them have the Blighted Agent? It might be. But I don't think so. I think it's too easy for them to do something where they draw another protection spell and then don't cast their Blighted Agent on turn two. Distortion Strike, Vines of Asswood, Mutagenic Growth. We're going to take the Vines. And the Ravine is fine. Let's see if they go very aggro here. 
Getting into the distortion strike. No, nope, just mutagenic growth for mana. Okay. So I don't love our chances here. We're going to get hit for five. Then, or up to five, then up to seven. Here come a couple of Ink Moth Nexuses. Let's go ahead and eat this Blighted Agent. I don't think Tracker's going to have the same damage output as just Huntmaster here, so we're just going to do that. Don't think there's any reason to not to just get a Swamp. So if they don't cast anything this turn... Looks like they will. Something like a groundswell will kill us. Okay. So there's eight, or we are at eight. Needed something better there. So this is going to be seven. 8, 9, 10, 11. Going to be one damage short. Not exactly sure what we can do. If we so we attack with a ravine, that's 4. That's 7 for the ooze, 9 from the huntmaster, 11 from the wolf, and the huntmaster's trigger is one more. Nothing really we can do differently. Except have this be a terminate. All right, we'll F6. Okay. So in this matchup, I usually will take out Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Find it's pretty poor. And bring in, um, well, to be honest with you, I usually have a lot more for this matchup. Jun Charm is okay. Huntmaster is okay. Explosives is okay, I guess. Lots of times I'll have this list set up with like Shadow Guild Mages and um, Guild, uh, Grim Lava Mancers in my sideboard that come in against Infect. Um, it's not great. When I switch to stuff like Jun Charm and Engineer Explosives, um, because they are more in the way of like sweepers, I don't really like the rest that much either. And we are on the play, so Liliana, it's just really bad against Ink Moth Nexus. Pretty bad there. Let's try a Blightning. I don't think Engineered Explosives really does enough for us. Looking for a Bitter Blossom, for sure. This does not do it for me. Yeah, we can hang on to this. 
Looking for a land, obviously, so we'll put that on the bottom. Geist of St. Traft. Well then. And lots of blossoming defenses. I think I've seen this before where they bring in stuff that's just like hexproof creatures. Um, so, we could take Noble Hierarch. That's pretty interesting. Because then they don't have white, but any fetch land turns on their Geist for them. So, I think we should take Geist. And plan on Fatal Push next turn, or Dreadbor on this Hierarch. Um, hmm. So we're getting a Blood Crypt. I think the best plan is going to be Thought Seize right now. Geist distortion distortion strike. Okay, so let's take this Geist. And let's fatal push this hierarch. Um, the reason I want to cast all these right now is to play around a potential spell pierce. Like if we had just dreadboard and then next turn tried to thought seize the Geist. They could have drawn a spell pierce and really screwed us up. So we should be in okay shape here. The blossom defenses are going to be tri uh, tricky to try and play around. But they might not have any lands left. Blighted agent. Okay, that's great. That's great that they did not draw any lands before they drew that Blighted Agent. So that they couldn't hold up Blossoming Defense. So here comes Ink Moth with Distortion Strike. So that's going to be a lot of damage. Huntmaster's pretty good. Let's get a Swamp and a Mountain. So now our opponent goes to 9, and now they have to kill us next turn. Otherwise, we attack for 8. Or, we, we put our opponent to 9, yeah. And now we have attacking for 8 plus the upkeep ability available, as long as they don't cast any spells on our turn. So it's funny, they actually have to, in order to get out of this situation, they have to say go, and then let me attack, and then post-combat, Blossoming Defense. Oh, that's going to help them. That's not going to make it lethal. Unless... Let's see. Well, we know they still have two copies of Blossoming Defense in their hand. The only way that we can make them dead here is if they could, like, discard some kind of enchantment or something with a, with Colgon's command, and I don't think that's very likely. I think our best chance here is to attack with everything and get our up tree upkeep trigger and have Colgon's command up if our opponent 
tries to do something wild. Also, we kill them if they use a fetch land. Okay. So that's good. On a mulligan, we got to steal that one. Um, it's tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I don't think I want duress. I think duress has too high of a chance of whiffing. And part of the way that you win is just, like, not worrying about their instances and sorceries, just getting rid of the creatures. Yep. I think I'm okay with this. This hand looks amazing. So... This could be bad for us, obviously. This could be a noble hierarch. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna play this blood crypt. Blossoming defense, vines of asswood, glistener elf, along with an ink moth nexus. Taking the elf. Because there's so many ways that they can protect it. And next turn we just play the Bitter Blossom and just ride it. Going to have to watch out for our life total now. Ah, uh, that's not good for us. That is not what we wanted to see. So another hand is Vines, Blossoming Defense. Can't block. I've got nothing else going on, so I think it's time to Dreadbore the Hierarch. I guess there wasn't really a good reason to play the forest instead of a swamp there. But I do want to keep track of my life total a little bit. I think this fairy rogue is probably blocking the angel. Blossoming defense plus another vines. It's going to be it. That's too bad. We had a great hand. But we just could not beat that Geist off the top on turn two. All right. Fair enough. Let's go to round two. All right, we're back for round two. I'm going to keep this. It's a little awkward. But a land is really good. We don't have that many lands left in the deck that don't add red. And... Yeah. Bitter Blossom on turn two just is really good against a lot of decks. Like, this hand is great against a lot of decks. But the problem is that it's game one, and we don't know if it's one of those decks or not. Ah, uh, so. This is probably the enemy, which is, say, Boggles. Well, Plains Go is an interesting choice for our Boggles friend. Um, here's a Bitter Blossom. So, what would be cool is if their only creature is... No, Leyline... What? Ruined Halo? So this is like Enchantment Nykthos Heliod 
combo kind of thing. It's very strange. Luckily, naming Dark Confidant? That's really weird. Okay. Well, these Colgon's commands are pretty terrible. Luckily, we've got a Tarmogoyf. And also, luckily, they can't name Fairy Rogue, which is kind of cute. Uh, with their rune halo. They can, however, play a ghost cord or ghostly prison, and then we're like dead. That's a possibility for sure. Suppression field. Let's respond. <laughs> Okay. I guess I could have, like, made myself discard a card with Colagon's command, but I think it's going to be more important to do that later when I have a better card to discard to bump up this Tarmogoyf. So here's five mana for a Sphere of Safety. Yep. Okay. So I can't attack unless I pay four. Well, here's a really good play. I'm gonna discard a Colagon's Command. A four. Love it. <laughs> this one does not seem to be going very well. Another sphere, okay, so, and a suppression field. So, I clearly can't pay 12 mana to attack anything ever. So, how do I win this game? I can't target my opponent, so... There's no chance of Liliana. Opponent has a lot of mana. Another ley line, sure. I don't think we can deck our opponent. They probably have something. Heliod, maybe. The angel making card, maybe. I can eventually target myself with a Liliana ultimate and sacrifice my own Bitter Blossom, so. That's an avenue to at least stay alive, but I really don't think that there's any way that we're able to win. Especially now that we have to pay 18 mana to attack with a fairy rogue. More than I, ha more lands that I have in my deck. So these bitter blossoms aren't very good. And then I guess my opponent just says F six until I lose. Okay.
Phyrexian Unlife. Okay. All right. So, that didn't go very well. Let's see what we can do. Um, in the way of things to fight this, um, Damping Sphere actually stops Nykthos, so that's kind of good. Engineer Explosives, obviously, is a card that we really we really need to draw. Duress and Blightning are pretty solid. Um, just because, like, if they have Leyline, then they have Leyline, but... I can't. I don't think we can just play like lightning bolts and fatal pushes and be like, hope you know, play around it. Like that's not like a good way to win. Um, Bitter blossom's a little bad, I think. Suppose another hunt master might be okay. It flips back and forth a lot. Might be better than grim lava mancer, but lava mancer is a good way to deal some damage too without attacking. Probably just better than scavenging ooze. Nothing else I especially want here. Don't think this is a very good matchup. I guess we have Liliana, so it's probably a keep. There's the ley line. Two ley lines. Okay. So I looked I look at this hand and I'm like, well, I don't have any discard, so it's probably not that great. But I don't know. It doesn't seem that bad right now. Um not a real ton of reason to get overgrown tomb, so it's not. Okay, we got outs. It's not the worst. I kind of want to discard it, though. Nah, that's all right. Want to put on as much pressure as we can before they draw land. There's a land... So now their Nykthos will add a ton of mana if they want it to. It's a journey to nowhere. Okay. Okay. So pretty glad we got this Bitter Blossom in play. That doesn't do anything. Still haven't hit a Black Source that we needed. Which is too bad because now our opponent has 5 mana. And a sphere of safety, I'm sure. Oblivion ring. Okay. That's fine. That's interesting. Because Gulsy Prison is so good against against that. Suppression field is pretty solid against Liliana, but we can get through it. Just can't activate it this turn if we draw a black source, which we did. So we'll play it and not use it. Cancel. <laughs> you never know. Maybe Magic Online is bugged. So now our opponent has access to six mana, which is a lot. Seven mana. There's a Sphere of Safety. There's a Rune Halo. Naming. Can't name Fairy Rogue. Sorry to inform you. Liliana of the Veil, sure. So, the plan is going to be to have us discard cards. I'll discard a Thought Seize. Let's 
cast this Lava Mancer. I guess, actually, not a ton of reason to cast the Lava Mancer. We can't target them. So this is going to be tough. The problem is we can only... There's a ghostly prison, so now it's like a ton of mana to attack. We can't... When we draw our engineered explosives, we can't actually do it for that much. Let's discard. I guess I'll play the Dark Confidant. Don't have a lot of reason not to, because I can make I can sacrifice it at any time I want now because of Liliana. I could also just kill it with Dark Confidant if I really had to. Yeah, uh, kill it with Grim Lava Mancer. So there's some stuff. This is going to cost, what, two mana to do this? Costs ten mana to attack. I guess I was supposed to make them discard there, but whatever. It's probably another one of these. Spreading seas, got it. Okay. Nevermore. Okay. I wonder what the name is. Maelstrom Pulse. Smart. Alright, Abrupt Decay is something. We're getting somewhere now. Now it's going to be tough. Now it's going to be tough. I think we can throw in the towel here. The problem about the Abrupt Decay is I just don't think hitting any one of these really does it for us. I mean, we could hit the Ghostly Prison, but then we have, still have these two Sphere of Safeties to worry about. We can do something like hit the Journey, and then have, and then we have to draw Engineered Explosives and cast it for three, and then there will be one, two, three four, five enchantments still, so then that's ten mana to attack. Yeah, I don't think that we can really do anything from here, so. All right, fair enough. Let's see if we can win three in a row. Okay, we're back. Round three. Uh, I would like to play first. Hand looks pretty good.
There is probably an argument for playing a tapped land first, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go get a swamp right now. Oh boy. This is like a Death's Shadow aggro deck. So, it's kind of funny. I'm going to take the Death Shadow. Or I could just take Teamer Battle Rage. Teamer Battle Rage is an interesting one with these, with all my fairy tokens. Make them try and kill me with Step Links. Yeah, let's do that. We'll use the Fatal Push on the Death Shadow. And then have a bunch of 1-1s one to stop Step Links's canister. This is one of the people that had one of those... There's only three people with League Trophies right now, because the thing just reset. And this dude's one of them. 14 Step Links. Okay. That's a good draw. I almost want to play the Quagmire now, because... If I draw an untapped land next turn, I want double black to play Liliana. I think we just let this happen, which is zero damage. Why did you do this? Did you consider maybe something else? Okay. Yeah. Let's just kill this thing. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go get a forest. I feel like I'd like to keep my life total high if possible. Because we have Bitter Blossoms coming. You can go ahead and get rid of that Step Links, please. Another Death Shadow, okay. Alright, let's Thought Seize. Team or Battle Rage, Mutagenic, Mutagenic, Blossoming Defense. Let's take the Battle Rage. Although, wait. We're going to be going to 16. It's a lot of damage if they Mutagenic Growth here. It's also a lot of damage if they draw Fetch Land. And then they can Team or Battle Rage with two mutagenic growths, so they can put themselves, if they draw fetch land, they go to nine, then seven, then five, with two mutagenic, so we're dead to a land, that's pretty scary, I guess I should have ticked up the Liliana first, but I don't really know, so we're going to 16, this is going to be five, this, at a, at a moment's notice, the Death Shadow could be a five, five, then... Plus four plus four, so a nine nine. I think we can beat a nine nine. But I don't think we can beat a a really huge one. So let's take the team of battle rage. Tick up. Let's see what they discard. We're gonna discard one of our bitter blossoms here. Cause the other thing is that if they don't go for it right now, like they might want to try and attack this Liliana down. Because that seems like a pretty fair thing to do. But then we have the Quagmire up. So, they probably have to go after Liliana. Mishra's Bobble is great for us. Look at our top card. Yep.
Now they get a new card. Now we get a token. Hello, friend. So that's a great draw, of course. They could go to five. They could team if they if their last card is team or battle rage. I think we're dead here, but I don't think it's very smart to play around that. Alternatively, we could have just not blocked. Don't know. If we draw an untapped red source, then we can attack for lethal next turn. Be four from the Raging Ravine, eight from our Huntmaster and our Wolf, and they did draw... No, they didn't. Okay. Then what did they do? They just mutagenic growth for no reason? That's weird. Like, it's scary, but we gotta go for it. I guess... Wait a second. Did I mess up? That was four. Were they dead? Are they supposed to be dead right now? No, it's because they got that untapped. No, maybe I'm supposed to... Maybe they're supposed to be dead right now. I might have... Just done my math wrong there. <laughs> fun. Fun, fun. Things are going well. Okay. Okay. I guess I just did my math wrong. Six plus two. They were at... I don't know. I forget now. <laughs> Alright. So Huntmaster, Finks, those seem good. Bela... Uh, Bela's not the greatest. Engineered Explosives looks awesome. Um, I think the Bolts and the Lava Mancer are probably fine. Um... I could see getting rid of Dark Confidant. These all look okay. Colgon's command doesn't really hit anything. Tireless Tracker is probably not the best. Maybe a Bailoth is better. Yeah, we can roll with this. Playing real tight. <laughs> Just doing my math wrong. Getting Sphere of Safety into Oblivion. Woo! Okay. Game two. Hand looks good. Okay. All right. Sorry, Canister. You're not uh, getting another trophy, I guess. 
That was a pretty wild match. Here we are for round four against Oink Mage. Oink Mage, that's the best name ever. Dude, I love Oink Mage. Oink Mage. That's a sick name. Oink Mage. Really gotta think hard about going first or second for Oink Mage. Alright, we're back. We have a keepable hand. So, I'll keep it. Hand looks pretty good. Aha! A human's strategy. Just a bunch of people. I love it. Um, yep, Bloodstained Mire for a swamp. I okay. Opponent Mulligan to six, which is great. And we can strand this Reflector Mage in their hand for a little bit. We take this Meddling Mage. see what they play. Cavern into attack for one. Vile. Love it. Quagmire, your turn. Next turn. Let's see what they play here, if anything. Horizon can be go. Love it. This looks like a great time to give him a little two-for-one action. Destroy. Deal two damage and destroy an artifact. Sure. Fine. Meddling Mage. What are we naming? Just don't name Tarmogoyf and we're good. Lightning Bolt. Love it. So now I'm going to go Vern Catacombs for Forest. Goyf Goyf. And here comes a Reflector Mage on one of them. Which is fine. And then we Dreadbore the Champion. Definitely Dreadboring the Champion. I really, it really sucks that we have to leave this around, but that's fine. Um... Doesn't matter. So as long as our last card isn't another Reflector Mage, then we're in kind of good shape. Their last card is another Reflector Mage, though, so... Oh, it's one of those. Sure. I'm gonna name a Tarmogoyf. I won't crack. We might draw a Tireless Tracker. We might draw a Huntmaster. I'm not attacking yet. Maybe next turn, though. Yeah, now I'm going to want to attack for sure. This puts me to 12, or puts me to 13. Still not cracking. 
Okay. That's okay. This is a reflector mage. This is great. This is fantastic because that card is called Ravager of the Fells. So Yeah, we bolt here. Let's fetch a swamp. I'm okay with crap caching in this hissing quagmire. To block the reflector mage. And then I'll go ahead and get a stomping ground on end step, I guess. Hello, friend. You don't want to attack. My opponent is wondering why that I, I was able to cast that is because it is named Huntmaster of the Fells and not Ravager of the Fells. All right, so that went well. Huntmaster, uh, Jun Charm, Jun Charm, Explosives, yes. Thought seizes out and cut one Liliana. Let's roll. Again, I don't love Finks. Um, it's just not that great against Reflector Mage. Doesn't really help you turn the corner against the draws that are good against you, which are like the Mantis Rider draws. Um, yeah. And it requires you to get multiple green sources, which isn't always easy to do. Looks fine. Ziggurat, go. Yes, please. Um, Bloodstained Mire for Swamp. Hopefully they don't have a Thalia Guardian of whatever. Okay, so this is great. They can... Uh, Sin Collector sucks. So take the Thalia. Nothing else is really that scary. Another Ziggurat for Kite Sail Freebooter, and now we get to kill it with one of our Dread Boars if we want to. That's interesting. Because we could instead go get a Sami Ground and play a Tarmogoyf. Is that good? Don't know. I think it's good. Get this thing in play. They did not have a Reflector Mage last we checked. So there's a Champion of the Parish, and then Athalia's Lieutenant. Okay. So that seems good. Except if we draw a land, then we get to do all kinds of action. We didn't draw a land. 
So Jun Charm is out of the question right now, obviously. I don't think we can Bitter Blossom. So we are casting Dreadbore on something this turn. We could cast Lightning Bolt on something this turn, though, instead. We could Bolt the Freebooter, get our Dreadbore back, and then Tarmogoyf is a 4-5. We could also Bolt the Champion of the Parish right now. I think we're I think we're better off dread boring the champion of the parish. It'll be hard for them to attack through a 3-4 this turn with their Thalia's lieutenant. Dire fleet daredevil. Okay, they can inquisition us. That's pretty good. Ah, okay. They have Dreadbore available because they have a land. So that's good for them too. However, if we draw a land, then we can cast Jun Charm. That's a bad draw. So now we're in some trouble because we have to bolt. We know they have Sin Collector. I think it's best for me to bolt. What are we taking here? A lot of damage? I think we're bolting this. Taking four here. We untap, we draw land. Oh, no, they took the Jun Chime, obviously. Okay. So there's our land that's a little late. We get to go to one. If they don't have a Thalia's Lieutenant or something. Sin Collector was pretty good. Okay, so I feel pretty good about this matchup. I mean, we had to get stuck on land to lose that one. I think we we're in really good shape otherwise. Still pretty happy with this uh, with this setup. Looks good. Wish we had a creature of some kind. Some kind of threat. I'm gonna... Vern Catacombs for a swamp into Inquisition. Lieutenant, Lieutenant... Thalia... Bob. I think I'm gonna take the Thalia... Seems like I can set up some kind of Jun Charm situation um, as long as there's no Thalia in play. It's pretty good. Yeah. Kind of a tell that I have Bolt, but whatever. I wanted to get an instant into my graveyard. That's why I would do that there. 
um, use the Fatal Push. Bolt's actually even better than Fatal Push in this matchup because it hits Mantis Rider every time. Dire Fleet Daredevil, aha! Welp. Could have played around that one. <laughs> I think I'll go ahead and fetch, I think a Blood Crypt. Um, nah. Go ahead. Let's see what they do here. So that worked pretty well. Unfortunately, can't get that Mantis Rider, but next turn we can Inquisition it. Inquisition our opponent plus Dreadbore it. Whatever we want to do. Let's take a Thalia's Lieutenant and just go ahead and Dreadbore right now. Whoops. Ah, do we want to Dreadbore? You know what? I don't want to Dreadbore. I want to say go. And the reason is. If our opponent plays a meddling mage and names lightning bolt and our hand is two lightning bolts, then we will feel really silly. Although they also could have just drawn Restoration Angel, and then I'd also feel really silly. Okay, they didn't. There's a Thalia's Lieutenant. Here's a Dark Confidant. That's getting killed. I don't love it, but we might as well do this. And I'll keep the land in my hand just because of Tireless Tracker. More Horizon Canopies. This is why we really need a creature. Luckily, they just have Hierarchs. Got a lot of real nice draws in our deck. So Dire Fleet for what? You can Inquisition me, I suppose, and find out that I have a forest. Okay. To bolt me upstairs. It's not the worst. I'm not very good, especially because we're getting attacked for a lot of damage. With first strike. That's not what I want to see them have. I guess we take it. Hope we don't die. Ah, uh, we're dead. Rats. Yep. We uh, just didn't have a real good way to turn the corner there. I wonder, you know, that Dire Fleet Daredevil to kill our Tarmogoyf was really good. But even if we had played around that, then the Dare Daredevil would have gotten something eventually. Would have gotten a way to kill our Tarmogoyf eventually. So I think we just needed 
one more of these dudes, or these dudes. Alright, well, that's that. You know what? I play. I I paid my play points. I'm I'm playing one more round. I'd love to play a first. This hand looks great. We're just in it for the love of the game. Thoughtsy's Inquisition, Death Shadow. Uh, yeah, okay, all right. I just want to take the Death Shadow and not let them have any creatures. That being said, don't think I can beat a 3 4 Swamp Walk. We'll see what happens, though. Clever play. So let's see, we're getting Inquisitioned, or Thought Seized. Yeah. So what would be real nice is if we draw a discard spell of our own. Then we take their Thought Seize, or take their Inquisition. Still have a street wraith. Nope, now they don't have a street wraith. Inquisition my lily. Sure. Ooh boy, I have bad news. Yep, I'm just casting it. I guess I could get hit by a Stubborn Denial. That definitely is a thing. But I don't think Stubborn Denial goes in a lot of the same decks that have Overgrown Tomb. Could be wrong, though. I think our opponent is frustrated because we drew the same card that we they really wanted to get rid of. Um, they would be even more mad if they knew that we were one and three right now. So I don't know about any of the cards in their hand. I think it was a Street Wraith. Here's an Inquisition. That's fine. I was probably gonna discard that anyway. A Grim Flare. That's a good card. I like that card. I'm going to make them sacrifice that Grim Flayer. And then... I guess the right play is to get a forest. Fire up Hissing Quagmire. An ooze. Hello. Let's tick up. Discard a dismember, which means they obviously have another removal spell in their hand. Okay. So we can either gain life or we can try and get rid of their delirium, which I don't think we can. They have lots of instances, is, is, lots of creatures, one artifact, but that still leaves them with four. So I think the best play is going to be to get rid of a death shadow and get rid of a grim flare.
So now we have a Liliana. Now our opponent has a Lurgwaif. Um, let's make you sacrifice a creature. And then... I'm a little concerned about Abrupt Decay, so I'm not going to play this Liliana right now. I'd rather just get in my beats with my Quagmire here. What do you know? That's a very interesting way to play that, too, by the way. Alright. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> I was going to attack and see if they had removal. They didn't. So, ripping that Liliana was pretty good. Let's bring in all of our sweet value cards. Um, I like Nile Spellbomb a lot. What comes out? Probably the bolts. Explosives looks a lot better. And then I'll play one Thought Seize. Lava Mancer might also be kind of bad. Let's give this a whirl. Um, I like Thought Seize over Inquisition because lots of times we have trouble dealing with between Abrupt Decay and Fatal Push that's in our deck. We have a lot of trouble dealing with Tassiger and Grimag Angler. I kind of imagine that they have uh, Tassiger in there somewhere. This looks great. Opponent mulliganed, which is good for us. Not doing anything over there. So what I don't want to see here is a Grim Flyer. Let's go get a Blood Crypt. So this is probably an Abrupt Decay. Yeah. Could have guessed, but I think I was just casting it anyway, using my mana. Traverse for a swamp. Interesting. What does that mean? I'm guessing my opponent has Death Shadow in their hand. They probably have more removal as well. So I'm going to play Scavenging Ooze. Yeah. Like, if I Blightning them right now, then I'm in a lot of trouble if they have Death Shadow. Or I could be. Could also not be. Who knows? But they went for lands. They went to Traverse for lands. So the problem is just that I don't have a lot of removal right now. think... No, you know what? We're just going to do it. We're just going to go for it. Because I want to do this before they have too few cards in hand. I guess they could have Bayloth. I have no idea really what their deck contains. Like, th these kinds of decks just have whatever. All kinds of business. So now they're at 12. They discard a Snapcaster and a Fatal Push, so that was a good one. Sure. So they could traverse. No, oh, there's a death shadow. 
So let's do this. Let's go you discard, you take two damage, and let's do that right now before they draw a card with Mistress Bobble. If their last card is Street Wraith, then this really sucks. Now it's Colgon's Command. Love it. Okay. Let's play the Silvergrown Tomb. Okay. So we're in good shape. Our opponent has one card in hand. We got lots of stuff going on. So <laughs> there's the Street Wraith. Yep, Tracker into Verdant Catacombs looks real nice. Fetch now. Uh, I'm going to Swamp. I'll draw a card this turn. I guess a second red wouldn't have been the worst idea. But I think we're okay. Also have... Um, I have a forest in my hand, so I'm not concerned about green mana. Not having enough green mana for my ooze. So that was untapped. So they likely have a Snapcaster Mage for... An abrupt decay. So that's not that much of a problem. We can cast the scavenging ooze and force their hand a little bit. Nile Spellbomb will force their hand a little bit too. So they could, like, Colagon's Command or something right now. They don't have that. Let's play Huntmaster. Okay. So. Dream Crush. The no reason Dream Crush. Except that I paid my money. I want to play as much as I can. I want to beat up on these Death Shadow decks like it's nothing. This this deck's great against Death Shadow. Blightning was super good. All these cards were great. If I play against Death Shadow more and mono enchantments less, we'll be okay. Um, yeah. So, headed into SCG Worcester... Things are looking okay. Um, my losses were to Infect, Mono Enchantments, and a Humans match that looked pretty good for us. Kind of both the Infect and Humans looked pretty good for us. The Enchantments deck did not, but then we beat these Death Shadow decks pretty easily. Um, I like where the deck's at. It's tuned for specific stuff, and I hope that that's what we hit, I guess. I mean, you can't you can't really win them all. Modern is a wide open format, um, and you can't really beat everything. But I think we're hitting the meta game pretty well, and I think that these are the like, like a team a team tournament is kind of weird in the when, what what you would expect for the meta game. So I think that these are the things that I'm I'm worried about are things like humans that we seem to be doing well against. Um, I think dredge is a really good one. Uh, like graveyard decks like that, maybe even KCI. So we've got a lot of this stuff covered. And, and of course, like Jeskai Control and the Mirror. So those are the decks that I'm really gunning for, and I feel like those matchups are pretty good. Um, other stuff like Nykthos Enchantments and shit like that, it's kind of not. And we're not like, I don't know, we don't have a lot of Maelstrom Pulses and a lot of Abrupt Decays to deal with just like the random stuff. But I think that we're better off having, having you know, our, our specific target metagame kind of dialed in and yeah i think i think that this uh list is pretty much where i like it at the moment i don't know i'll be back to the um just always tuning i'm always tuning so we'll see um if i come up with something else but in the meantime thank you very much for watching 
My apologies to Darknar27, because now there's going to be video evidence that we were just trolling with you. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a like, give me a subscribe, check out my blog at jundlife.blogspot.com, where I talk about almost exclusively modern Jund. And thank you very much for watching. See you next time.